Hi there, everyone, and welcome to St. Mark Sacramento on this beautiful Christmas Eve. It feels strange to be here in the sanctuary without the whole church family and guests gathered for our usual celebration. But it's good to know that we're all bound together in a loving, supportive community brought together through the medium of video. Christmas Eve 2020 is a very odd for most of us. It's different in so many ways. We know that we must celebrate the great news of the birth of the Christ child, and yet our celebration is tinged by the enormous level of suffering going on in the world around us. And many of us are painfully aware uh, as we celebrate Christmas as of not being with family and friends in the usual way. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let's pray together. Beloved in Christ, as we gather to worship, may each of us be delighted to hear again the message of the angels. And in heart and mind, may we be ready to go to Bethlehem and see the miracle unfolding and the baby lying in a manger. May we now hear and internalize the holy words of Scripture, telling of the loving purposes of God from the beginning of time, even until today. But first, I invite us to pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth, for healing from pandemic and goodwill among all people here in Sacramento and around the world. And, O oh God, we pray as we must for those who cannot celebrate tonight, for those living in hunger and poverty, those living in the cold on our streets or living under oppression and fear. We pray for those who are sick, those who are mourning, the lonely and the unloved, and for all those who don't know the blessings of your grace and love. And we pray for those we're missing tonight, to separated family members, for those who rejoice with us, but are with us no more. They're in a greater light on another shore, but their hope, like ours, was in the Word made flesh and we are bound to them forever in our worship of you and of our Lord Jesus Christ. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to the throne of heaven in the words that Christ himself taught us as we say, our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beside me here you see the Advent wreath. In a moment, we'll be relighting the candles of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. And then we'll be lighting the Christ candle as we celebrate the fact that peace, joy, hope, and love come to perfection in the birth of the Christ child. And then we'll be singing and hearing the story. So I do please sing along at home or wherever you are. When you're being invited to sing, words will appear on the screen. When you don't see words, we invite you to listen and to enjoy. Please join now in singing the famous Charles Wesley Christmas hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Mercy, my. 
Let's reconcile Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heavenborn Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all he brings Raised with healing in his wings Mild he lay his glory by Born that we may no more die Born to raise us from the earth Born to a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hi, I'm Iola Halligan. I'm Ginny Romero. And I'm Amelia Romero. As we prepare to light the final candle of the Advent wreath, the Christ candle, we are aware that Advent hope has moved us, Advent love has led us to this night, Advent joy stirs our hearts, Advent peace stills and reassures us as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ among us. Our hearts are full as we look forward into the light of Christmas. We are ready to hear the angels sing. Like the Magi, we are ready to bring all our gifts and lay them at the feet of the child of Bethlehem. It is time we set flame to this advent of hope by lighting the Christ candle. Because of the birth of Jesus, our lives will never be the same again. Hope, peace, joy, and love were born into the stable so many years ago. And this night, hope, peace, joy, and love are born again within each of us. And so this night, we recommit ourselves to share the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love in the midst of our world's confusion. Emmanuel, God with us, rejoice, a Savior is born, and is born in us today. Joy to the world. A poem by Madeline Lengel. Come, Lord Jesus. Do I dare cry? Lord Jesus, quickly come. Flash the lightning in the air, crash the thunder on my own. Should I speak this awful prayer? Come, Lord Jesus, help me dare. Come, Lord Jesus, you I call to come, come soon. Are not the child who lay once in the manger stall, are not the infant meek and mild, you come in judgment on our all. Help me to know you, whom I call. Come, Lord Jesus. Come this night with your purging and your power. For the earth is dark with blight, and in sin we run and cower. Before the splendid raging sight of the breaking of the night. Come, my Lord, our darkness end. Break the bonds of time and space. All the powers of evil rend by the radiance of your face. The laughing stars with joy attend. Come, Lord Jesus, be my end. <laughs>
A scripture reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 to 7. The prophet predicts the coming of a great ruler. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. Thanks be to God. Christmas come close in a child's crumpled face in the ragged and raw in a harsh birthing place in a surging of joy in a bundle held tight in a breath in a cry through the dark of the night Christmas come close to the place where we are In our longing for peace For a sign, for a star For a certainty born In uncertainty space For a mystery grasped That our blindness can trace Christmas come close to the world that is bleak, giving hope a new home, making prophecy speak, so the angels will sing, and the wise will be heard, and the powers will take heed of this child and his word. Christmas come close into focus and frame To humanity's heart For the child to make claim For the poor to be served For the rich to kneel low For Magnificat now In the Christmas we know Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 to 56. The Virgin Mary sings her holy song of faith. Mary got up and hurried to the city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next. 
who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich home empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then she returned to her home. Thanks be to God. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with verses 1 to 7. St. Luke tells us about the birth of Jesus. 
In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment incur occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Thanks be to God. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. The shepherds go to the manger. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields. They were guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David City. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, 
The shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. sharing some final thoughts for this Christmas Eve. I want to add my thanks to Kurt Johnson and to Amelia and Ginny Ramiro who played our bells. And they in turn joined with Ayala Halligan to light the Christ candle. Thanks to Kath Fenimore Brown, to Mark Slaughter, to Robert Rauch, to Jim and Jean Strathdee for the music. And you'll see Julie Strathdee also appears at the end. Thanks to PJ Rauch and to Irene Celadon and Elizabeth Cruz for work on the video. And thanks to Reverend Linda Pickens Jones for reading for us. A favorite verse of mine from scripture is in Romans 8. It says, I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord, not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing that is created. Wow, nothing can separate us from God's love. And Christmas is all about the gift of God's love. God breaking into human history, 
saying love has to be the way. Let's reset the story of the human family. And so I'd invite you this Christmas to do two things. One is to take some time to immerse yourself in the story. Don't worry about the history. Simply bathe in the beauty of it all and marinate in its love. Fill yourself with the joy. Breathe in the love and imagine yourself in the stable. And look at the manger where the cattle feed. And, and, and see a baby right where the cows eat. Imagine yourself to be Mary or, or Joseph or maybe a child of the host family. You could even imagine yourself, if you like, to be a cow or a donkey or one of the shepherds or the magi or one of their entourage traveling from distant lands. And when you've delighted in the joy, then take a moment to think of the ugly, violent side of the story, which we didn't read tonight. And it reminds me that when we become members of the United Methodist Church, we have a rather chilling vow. It says, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I've often thought, why do we ask this? But I have to admit that during this time of COVID and Trumpism and ugly politics, white supremacy, bigotry and violence, uh, to remind ourselves that it's God's grace, God's love. A number of years ago when I was pastor in the South Hayward United Methodist Church, the secretary and I were struggling on Christmas Eve to get the bulletin complete for the Christmas Eve service. And we just about done and we we're ready to lock up the office when there was a knock at the door and a man presented himself saying that he and his wife were really struggling uh, because they didn't have any money for a place to stay and it was very cold they didn't have any food is there any way that we could help well it was christmas eve what are you going to do so i talked with him and got to know about his need and decided that I would go with him to the hotel and pay for a couple of nights stay at the hotel. Well, when we got there, uh, I discovered his wife was there and then discovered that she was pregnant and was very close to giving birth actually. And guess what? Her name was Mary, Joe and Mary. So what do you do? You have to help. And Joe, the old Joe and Mary remind us that uh, there are times when so many people are struggling. They couldn't find a room at the inn. Who knows how much money they had for food. And then they had to flee from their homeland because of the violence there. And they became refugees, undocumented refugees crossing the border into Egypt. And so it's a reminder to us that Christmas is all about people who are struggling, people who are in need, and people who can help and share God's love with them. So in a moment, by the miracle of video, I will be out actually in the lobby because it wasn't going to work outside tonight. As we, Linda and I, join with the Strathdee family, to sing joy to the world in silent night. So please be ready to sing. Thank you. 
Amen. And with that beautiful song ringing in our ears, may I wish you a very holy and blessed Christmas. Loving God, we pray that your spirit, your spirit of love, of hope, and of joy will fill the homes of all who are participating in this worship service. May we sense the beauty and the wonder of Christmas, and may we sense the power of your love made real in each of our lives. We give you thanks for Christmas. In Jesus' most holy name. Amen. 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 We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The tidings we bring.